Hello and welcome to another webinar short from R&D Systems. Today I'll be discussing our Cell X Vivo kits that are specially designed for expansion or differentiation of immune cell types. These include lymphoid cells, myeloid cells, and cytotoxic cells. I'd like to spend just a few minutes highlighting what these kits are and show you some data derived from cells cultured using the Cell X Vivo kits. Cell X vivo differentiation or expansion kits come bundled with different combinations of reagents, including R&D system cytokines, activating antibodies, base medias, and buffers, as well as optimized protocols that result in reproducible cultures and consistent yields. We've done all of the optimization so that you don't have to. I'd first like to highlight kits we have to differentiate various T cell types. T-cell differentiation kits are available for both human and mouse, and as the schematic on the right highlights, all start with the isolation of CD4-positive naive T-cells from PBMCs for the human kits or mouse splenocytes for the mouse kits. Our MagSelect cell selection kits can be used for this step. This is followed by cell culture using the included reagents and optimized protocols found in the kit. In the first example, after five days of culture using the Cell X Vivo regulatory T-cell kit, the left flow diagram highlights CD4 positive T-cells expressing the Treg marker FOXP3, while the right chart highlights expression of both Treg markers FOXP3 and CD25. In another example, naive T-cells obtained from mouse splenocytes were differentiated with the mouse Cell X Vivo TH17 differentiation kit. The left graph shows cells incubated without differentiating reagents express little of the Th2 marker IL-4 or the Th17 marker IL-17. In contrast, cells cultured for five days using protocols in the Th17 kit exhibit a significant upregulation of IL-17. Similar human and mouse kits are also available for Th1 and Th2 T cell subsets, and I invite you to visit the website to see the supporting data. We also offer several kits for the differentiation of myeloid cell types. First, our human and mouse dendritic cell differentiation kits utilize immature CD14 positive monocytes as a starting cell population. Both kits contain base media, buffers, cytokines, and optimized protocols to drive these cells toward a dendritic cell fate. For example, the hollow trace in the graph on the left shows that immature mouse CD14 positive cells prior to differentiation express little of the dendritic cell marker CD83. The field trace is an isotype control. Contrast this with the middle graph that shows a significant increase in CD83 positive cells following our optimized 10-day cell culture protocol. I invite you to the, visit the website to see more data highlighting expression of additional human and mouse dendritic cell markers such as DC sign, CD80, CD86, CD11C, and more. In addition to expressing the correct markers, these dendritic cells also exhibit the expected activity. In the right graph, the blue trace shows the ability of mature human dendritic cells to stimulate the proliferation of allogeneic T cells. Similar kits are also available to drive human CD14 positive blood monocyte cells towards an M1 or M2 macrophage fate. Lastly, I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to our expansion kits for B cells, NK cells, and CIK cells. B cells represent only a small portion of the peripheral lymphocyte population, making it difficult to obtain sufficient quantities for many research applications. The Cell X Vivo expansion kit can help. B cells are isolated from PBMCs using magnetic separation. They're then expanded over a period of five days using our optimized reagents and protocols. The filled graph on the left highlights cells expressing the B cell marker CD20. The open histogram is an isotype control. Additionally, cells are viewed via light microscopy both before and after a five-day expansion using the kit. Expansion kits are also available for human natural killer cells and cytokine-induced killer cells. The schematic on the right shows that both of these cell types are expanded directly from PBMCs and require no cell selection process. And case cells are used as an example here. 
In the left graph, cells were expanded for 14 days with a standard method using cold culture with artificial antigen presenting K562 cells, shown in orange, or with a simpler protocol used with the cell ex vivo kit, shown in blue. In addition, the middle graph shows NK cells expanded using the Cell X Vivo kit express enhanced CD16 expression compared to K562 expansion, shown on the right. Not shown here, these cells are also CD3 negative and express NK cell markers including CD56, NKG2D, and NKP46. All of this data can be viewed on the website. In addition, expanded NK cells are also active. Tumor cells were loaded with a green vital dye. As the cells die, there's a corresponding decrease in fluorescence. In the left top image, green tumor cells have been incubated with expanded NK cells for four hours at a ratio of 0.078 to one. As that ratio of NK cells to tumor cells is increased, green fluorescence decreases, corresponding to enhanced killing. Finally, just to wrap up, we've worked hard to optimize our Cell X Vivo kits so that you get the best combination of reproducible and economical differentiation and expansion. I appreciate you taking the time today to learn more about Cell X Vivo. I've only shown a small fraction of the data we've collected using Cell X Vivo kits. I suggest you visit our website at the URL seen at the bottom of the page where you can browse through the data, as well as get more detail on individual kits and their protocol. Again, thanks for your time today.